Okay, so now we've got all this stuff, all the settings for static set up and ready to go. Now all we need to do is actually serve this stuff in our URLs. So if we look at the documentation again, and we scroll up a little bit, uh, we'll see this new setting here. So this is stuff that we can actually add in um, for our development server. So this is actually creating a development server for static files. It's very, very simple. So let's go ahead and open up our urls.py file. And we wanna import our static setting. So this is it right here. So from django.conf.urls.static and that's what we're gonna load it. I'm gonna put it right below the other one. So you keep some organization here. And now we also wanna have our settings files coming in. So from django.conf import settings this is going to get the setting specifically to static root. That's what we want. Um, and now all we do is add it to this stuff. So it's even showing you how to do it here, but you're just going to do plus static. And then we want to serve the static files. So settings.static URL. So settings.static static URL. And then the document root. So document root equals to settings dot static root. Um, so what's happening here is it's taking these URLs and then appending the static URL, which we set here. So it's the URL of static. And then it's, and then it's basically serving the static root folder and it's doing it because it's, it is static files. So this is how it's working. Uh, again, you don't want to do this on production you only want to do it inside of the development environment. So that being said, I'll just add a new setting in here, which long term, you're not going to want to do this, you're going to want to change how certain things work here. But uh, for our development, it's okay. Notice that this says debug equals to true. So you don't want this on in production. Well, that means that we don't want template on into production. So we can use this setting in our URLs for now. So I'll do if settings dot debug. So if in settings debug is true, then we're actually gonna add in our static URLs to the URL patterns. So URL patterns, and then I'll say plus equals static. So all this stuff up here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out here. And then I'm also gonna add that once again for media. So exact same stuff for media, just changing static URL to media URL and static document root to media root. All right, so now we've got this. Let's run collect static again. Do Python manage.py collect static. Say yes. All right, static files, none were copied, right? Which makes sense. That's how it should be. Um, and now let's go ahead and run the server. So Python manage.py run server. And I'm gonna change the port to 8899. Python manage.py run server 8899. And there we go. All right, so we had a little spelling error in there. Yeah, run server. Uh, so now I changed the port just so I can uh, make sure that my CSS that was cached, which happens on this port, um, I'm just gonna try it on a different one. So 8899, I go here. This doesn't look any different as it shouldn't because we haven't applied anything other than HTML to it. Then we look in admin and sure enough, our admin is coming through here. If it looks jumbled, if it's not showing up, then that means that we didn't uh, set up our static files correctly. Um, so let's actually take a look in our head document to make sure that our static is coming through. And notice it is, it's a static admin CSS base. So it's actually coming from where our static URL is. So we can actually change that static URL in our settings to let's say static ABC. Um, and then we can go back in. And now we see in here, it says static ABC. So that's where our CSS is actually coming from. It's actually coming up from our project now, uh, where before it wasn't. Uh, you can you could start a new project and test it out and see for yourself. Uh, but now that we've set up our own static, that means it's working directly from there. Um, it will, admin will work if you don't have your static files set up. Admin will continue to work because of how they set it up. Uh, but that's all we really need to do for displaying our static files and our static URL stuff um, outside or inside of our development environment. 
And the reason I did this is only because if for some reason I forget to get rid of this when I bring it live, um, then this this in, uh, inefficient method won't be right on our URL patterns, which is something we don't want. This definitely separates that from production and environment because when you go to production, you're not gonna forget that settings.debug should be off or hopefully you won't, that's, that's a big one. That's a much bigger one than leaving this, All right? Um, so yeah, if you have any questions on this, this is just serving static files, let me know. Otherwise, in the next one, we are gonna actually make our site look, well, a lot better. And we're gonna do that by using a open source framework called gitbootstrap.com, also known as bootstrap.com, formerly known as Twitter Bootstrap. It is no longer associated to Twitter whatsoever, although the designers that created it are from Twitter originally. Okay, so if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, let's keep going.